Hi, I'm Carl Becknell, and I'm going to share with you my love of container gardening. There's quite a few things I kind of want to go through and talk to you about and share uh, with many of the things I've learned through the years about gardening and about container gardening in particular. I love container gardening. It gives gardeners and designers so many opportunities. For um, a gardener, there's many things you can do. You can control mostly the, the environment of how the plants grow within their pot. And also you, you can change and adjust uh, the plants um, according to uh, the lighting, uh, the temperature. Uh, and so that allows you to grow much better quality and allows you to grow things you wouldn't normally be able to grow in a typical garden bed setting. As a designer, um, also that gives you many opportunities to plant things within a garden, uh, within the pot, uh, to get a certain effect. And also allows us to be more versatile in a garden. You can feature a plant. You also can move them indoors. You can um, enjoy them in different settings and different situations. Choosing the right container, there's many options there. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, designing the plants within planting the, the actual pot and also how to assemble it and how to take care of it. First of all is choosing the right container. I really like containers that have some age and some patina to them. Uh, I love old concrete pots that have a lot of uh, wear and tear. The older, the more algae on them, probably the, the more interesting for me. Um, also the same with terracotta or clay pots. Uh, I, love, I love those, they're the classic and um, they're easy, they're inexpensive, but over time they get more and more beautiful. And I love to use them as something you can keep and replant over and over again. So I've got a few pots to show you. Um, here's one sort of standard sort of a clay pot. This is more of a, an azalea type pot. It's a little bit lower, which works good for lower type plants, but I've got some taller things going. Um, this is a, a pitch pot or a resin pot that's used in the industry of, uh, of uh, timber and collecting pine sap. And it's, it's beautiful, can be used for planting. Uh, this is a great terracotta pot with a sort of a fluted pie crust, a nice little detail and it's a very special pot, it's Italian made. And now that you've decided on your design idea as to what you want, what's directing you as far as your plant selection, um, you should go ahead and choose your container and start assembling it. And so first thing is to, once I've, I've selected a few, I am going to take, and there's a drainage hole in the pot. It's really important. All pots gotta have that, otherwise you can run into big problems. And then we break some broken shard, which we always get from our pots, because they can break. And assemble a few in the holes in the bottom. And then very importantly is to add um, a little bit of gravel for drainage at the very bottom. All right. And then soil. Uh, soil is so important. Um, so a good potting soil is like the key thing here and you can't um, make it, the, more, the better you make it, the better it is for the quality of the plant. So just try to work hard to get a really good quality of soil. Um, so not the cheapest, but the best. And this is a good potting mixture uh, that I've used and I make myself. And I also, I, I mix in um, some of my, of my compost uh, that I make also. And uh, Here's a really good mixture of just well-rotted leaves and organic matter that I add to it. And it adds a tremendous amount of, of vitality and fertility to the soil. So I'm gonna mix some of that in there also. And if you don't have your own really good signature compost, you can always use some good peat moss. That helps also. I'm gonna add a little bit of peat moss. And a little bit more of this good potting soil. And we're getting a good mixture now of that. And I'm filling it about halfway because some of these plants are about this tall. So I'm going to start with the tallest, which is this tall verbena. Carefully under, turn it upside down and kind of gently push the roots out like that. 
Look at all those roots getting ready to pop out of there. They really need to grow and have some more space, so they're going to love this. Kind of anchor that to the back. <clears throat> this is a real pretty uh, sort of a lavender pink angelonia. Also really good for the summer sun and um, butterflies like this also. So putting that in. And here's a very tall purple gomfrina. Nice little punch of color, kind of contrast to it. And now to kind of cool it down a little bit is some white or silver Dusty Miller. And there's a nice combination right there. Add a little more soil to kind of fill in the gaps and spaces. Turning it, looking at it, making sure everything looks good. Um, and it does, I think. I was looking forward to just really taking off. And then now we have to just kind of do a good watering and place in the garden and enjoy it. Other ways, other ways of looking at the, the garden uh, the container is to um, consider um, uh, things like herbs. Um, I have a planter down here that I've selected a very long, old New Orleans kind of a concrete planter that I love. And I have thyme and I've got rosemary, chives, um, some basil and oregano mixed with some flowers to get some color also. I love that combination. Um, in this garden plant right here, I have um, a lily. Uh, I use bulbs a lot because they're inexpensive and they come back every year very well. And uh, sometimes the underplanting may need to be replenished. In this case, I've added, or I'm going to add some white angelonia and some real pretty blue uh, of this super petunia on there. And then in this metal urn, I've chosen some of these plants here. Um, I like this coloring that I've got here to go with this darker thing. I've got this pretty um, diasica, and here's some angelonia and a real pretty sort of a pinky coral colored geranium with this sort of spiky foliage of a, of a dracaena. Also, I have the classic uh, green ivy cascading out, which also makes a nice combination. Um, on our other side over here, I've potted up already uh, some strawberry jars and um, they are, we've been harvesting them. Uh, there's a few on there. My grandkids came and ate most of them, so there's not too many on there right at the moment. Um, but they've enjoyed it and we've enjoyed it too. Um, and the important thing about strawberry jars is that I've learned that you need to have like a sort of a, a watering hole down the center because of the way you take care of these, uh, that the ones up top won't get as much water as the ones on the bottom. So there's a pipe or a screen that's put straight down the center and holes are perforated. So when you water, there's a dispersal of water within that pot and it keeps it pretty well evenly watered. Uh, it works very good. So I do recommend doing that. And then this was a strawberry basket here. This was an old uh, berry picking basket that we lined and put in strawberries. So it's a reusing of a metal container, which works pretty good. This is a different kind of planting we're gonna do. This is a one that's uh, reused uh, Mm, it's, a, it's an air vent from the old houses here in New Orleans, raised houses, and uh, it's a beautiful decorative piece, a metal. And I, my design idea is to have this used as an interior piece uh, in your home for um, tabletop or a sideboard or some use in the, within the house. And so I've selected plants that will do very well interior. Uh, there and we're also something that's got a really interesting textures. Uh, so I've got some beautiful ferns, and I've got a hosta. Here's some more ferns here, and another one of these uh, wonderful dracaenas called dracaena spike. So in interior use, you want to be careful you don't have water spilling on the table. Uh, so we're going to line this uh, container with plastic so that if we have to water it, we won't have an accident on the furniture. Uh, so, <clears throat> so this one's sitting a little bit high, so I'm going to take it out of its pot because it's sitting a little too high. 
and work on bringing down just the height a little bit. And the other ones are great height, so I'm going to leave them in their container. And so I'm actually not planting them, we're just sort of arranging them in there so that we can maybe take them out later or water them separately or change them out. There's another fern here. You know, these wonderful long tassels that are really interesting. And then some spiky and some height uh, is from this little Dracaena spike. And now we can tuck or, or um, hide some of this plastic. I'm just going to tuck this in, but you can trim it off also. There we go. So the mechanics you don't want to see, and so you're going to try and hide this as much as you can. Mechanics of that. And then another detail is to use some sort of moss to kind of or something. Uh, so I'm using some Spanish moss, which I collected um, just a little bit uh, to kind of add and fill in any of the little gaps or spaces and hide the mechanics again. There we go. Kind of fluff it back out, make it look like it's kind of loose and pretty, and you can adjust it. If you have to add a little bit more moss or take away a little bit, you can always do that. But there's pretty much our finished product on that. It's really good. It'll last for weeks inside, but eventually you need to rotate those out. I wanted to show you um, a warm combination of yellows with a little bit of orange and this combination right here that I've selected. Um, these are all great for summer and uh, very bright and cheery and very warm. Uh, on this tray over here we have some mostly cool colors of um, the you know, guara and I got some beautiful scented geranium, some angelonia, some pentas and some other little petunias. Uh, those are just two sort of contrasting color combinations giving totally different effect. The, the advantage of having containers sometimes is that you can feature a plant during its season. Um, these are lilies that I've grown now for two or three years. Uh, there's times after this blooming stage where they pretty much just disappear and they're not very showy. So it's not a great thing to have in a garden but you certainly can in a pot. So I just rotate them out and feature them when it's their, when it's their season and when it's show time for them. Uh, these are beautiful white uh, Asiatic lilies with a sort of a dark speckly throat. They're, they're spectacular when they, when they do bloom. And I've chosen a sort of a taller pot uh, to kind of feature that tall spiky growth. This is um, a long view pot that I'm very proud to have. And also um, here are some beautiful gladiolas. These are super inexpensive. They're like pennies per bulb and they come back year to year. Um, and they make a spectacular show during this time of the year. You can stage them, have them show and, and produce at successions of different weeks as you plant them. And then a nice color contrast for the orange is this beautiful purple or blue salvia, which is, which is great. And it's a really good hummingbird plant too. And over here, I wanted to make sure that you saw um, another really great use for a strawberry jar. This is a beautiful jar that I've had for years. And we use succulents in here, which is a great um, planting. Uh, very great for those who don't like to water very much um, because they require very little water. Um, and I wanted to show you, uh, this made it all through the wet this past winter, which is we had a pretty hard freeze for us for New Orleans. We had one or two cavities that are, were still available and open, so I've selected one or two different textures and different kinds of succulents to add to our collection here. So this is a little sedum. 
So I've dug a little hole and depression and sort of gently push it in. And it's a little squeeze in there, but it, it will come out nice. And uh, here is another succulent uh, that's also pretty nice. This is uh, got some pretty little jade colored um, leaves. And we're going to have the hole dug and gently add that to it. You're going to lose some soil. Um, you may lose a few roots, but fortunately these are succulents and they're pretty tough and they'll come back. There we go. It only fits right in there. And there's your completed uh, potted succulent char. This is Carl Becknell and I am thanking you guys for spending a little time with me and learning about container gardening. I hope uh, you've enjoyed it as much as I have and let's thank Art and Bloom for sponsoring it. Thank you.